There is no better way to make your Linux desktop stand out than by creating custom desktop widgets, which can include a custom bar, a personalized app launcher or even your very own notification pop-up menu. And so today we will learn how to use AGS, a customizable and extensible shell that allows us to declaratively define Wayland widgets using simple JavaScript or TypeScript code. As you can probably tell, AGS or Ehlers GTK shell is heavily inspired by Elkavar's wacky widgets, and if we compare the two, I'd say that AGS offers a more batteries included experience and is quicker to get into thanks to JavaScript's simple syntax. All you need to get started is a single binary, which is readily available in Nix packages or the AGS GitHub repo. So without further ado, let's get straight to configuration. And to finally try it out, let's initialize our basic configuration file with an ags-init command, at which point you'll be able to start it with a plain ags command. Apart from the config file itself, the init step will also create some files needed by your code editor for error checking and providing completions, so make sure to also install the TypeScript language server and connect it to your favorite text editor. Now if we open the config.js file, we will see a simple bar example with several labels. It might seem slightly confusing at first, but don't worry, because we'll go over it step by step. Starting from the beginning, let's skip this time variable for now and focus on this big chunk of code. The bar constant variable defined here contains a JavaScript arrow function that takes a single parameter called monitor and returns an object of class window. A window is the first and most important top-level building block that is used to hold any of your GTK widgets. But the use of a function here is only needed for convenience, because with it you can later place this bar on any monitor simply by repeating its invocation. Meaning that if we wanted, we could simply initialize this window right away and hardcode the monitor ID. Every window needs to have a unique name, which is why we are also interpolating the monitor variable into it. The anchor property here allows us to anchor our widgets to one or several different parts of the monitor, like in this example, where it will stretch to fill the top part from the left to the right side. We can of course remove the left and right strings to make it simply stick to the top, or even delete the property altogether to center it. Exclusivity determines how our window will interact with other windows, allowing us to reserve some space for it with the exclusive option, make it respect other widgets with the normal option, or even force it to stay in one place no matter what with the ignore option. Another useful property not shown in this example is called layer, and it allows us to choose the window depth which can be useful for putting notification menu above anything else or placing a fancy clock widget below any other window. And finally, the child property, found on any widget that can contain another widget, can be used to nest widgets inside each other. The widget nested inside our window is called center box and it is basically a convenient box that arranges three children in a row, keeping the middle child centered as well as possible. As you can see, we actually don't have a center child in this example, so let's add it with a center widget property. And if you're wondering how I know which properties are available, you can find a complete list of all widgets and their properties on the AGS wiki page. Now that we have three widgets there, let's use the anchor property to stretch it across our screen, making it resemble a real Linux bar. But creating an entire bar from scratch is still tedious, which is why the AGS wiki provides a great bar template that we'll check out right after finishing with this example. And the only thing that we haven't looked at here is the time variable. AGS variables are the simplest way to make your widgets reactive because they simply hold the value that can be bound to widgets properties. Notice that in this example, the end widgets label parameter is bound to this variable, meaning it will be set to an empty string until the variable changes. And of course, it will change, because we are also making it poly JavaScript function every specified amount of milliseconds. It doesn't even need to be a JavaScript function, because we can also pull shell commands by providing them to it as a string, or even watch the command standard output using listen. These variables can be updated at any point in your script with set value and, most importantly, transformed into a fitting format in the place where you are binding them. So variables are cool, but the real killer feature of AGS is services, or more specifically, the incredible amount of built-in services that allow you to monitor and interact with audio, battery, system tray, Bluetooth or even Hyperland, meaning you don't have to implement any complex logic from scratch. 
And to demonstrate, let's download the ready-to-use example bar that I was talking about and check out how it uses these services. And while we are here, I also want to mention that the repo contains several more ready-to-use examples, so feel free to try them out. Upon opening the config file of this bar, you will see that first, it is quite big, and second, all of the used services are imported at the top. But to understand the structure, let's scroll to the bottom and see that it all starts with the same app.config function, holding a single top-level window, constructed by a function above, like in our default example. And the only difference is, instead of the simple labels, we now have these left, center and right functions, constructing several parts of our bar. If we scroll up, we'll see that each one of them returns a GTK box widget, which is primarily used to hold several widgets at once in a vertical or a horizontal line, which in this case basically allows us to position our modules in the correct section. Inside this, you will find your usual bar stuff like a clock, system tray, workspaces and volume. Let's now take a look at the first of our widgets and see that it does indeed use a service. The active ID variable here is bound to the ID property of the active workspace, allowing us to bind it somewhere later, just like with a regular variable. Except this one will only update when your active workspace changes, minimizing the amount of times widget has to be rebuilt and thus improving performance. Next, the workspaces variable is bound to the workspaces property, listening to any changes in our workspaces and then transformed into a list of buttons using the map method. In the end, this will give us a horizontal list of buttons, with each one of them corresponding to one of your workspaces. The buttons returned by it contain several properties, including the onClicked function, which will tell Hyperland to switch us to this specific workspace, a child, being a simple label with the ID of our workspace, and a class name, bound to the active ID variable defined in the beginning. Binding every button to the active workspace property allows us to check if the current ID is selected meaning we can later simply style the active button differently to make it stand out. And yes, you heard that right, with AGS it is incredibly easy to conditionally change the style of our widgets using simple CSS. And if you've been following along, you might have noticed a CSS file linked to our up-down in the config method. Let's check this file out, and what we can see inside is syntax already familiar to you if you have some experience with web or GTK development, allowing you to not only change colors and borders, but also define transitions, opacities and make use of your GTK theme. And if you don't want to decouple your styles from the code, you can also inline them directly into your widgets using the CSS property. There are plenty of CSS tutorials available online, so we won't focus on it today. So far we've been using JavaScript to configure AGS, but like I've mentioned in the beginning, it is also possible to use TypeScript. The wiki page provides an example TypeScript starter config, which we can even use with our existing configuration by moving it to the main.ts file and copying the config.js from the GitHub repo. This way to run AGS uses BUN, which is a fast JavaScript all-in-one toolkit that will not only let us switch to TypeScript, but also improve overall performance and even serve as a bundler. You will need to install BUN on your system for this method to work, but fortunately, it comes as a single lightweight binary available on most distros. We don't have to touch this file at all afterward and can simply launch AGS normally using the AGS command. Now that we know how to work with AGS and have a basic configuration, let's do what we like doing the most on this channel and move it to Home Manager. The Home Manager module provided by the AGS flake and maintained by Ailer himself can be installed by adding this GitHub URL to the inputs and passing it all the way to your Home Manager imports. This module will not only allow us to automatically link the AGS config to the correct location, but also include extra GTK runtime dependencies for building more advanced widgets. Note that the module will not make AGS run on startup, so don't forget to include the plain AGS command in your system startup script. I'd like to thank Ailer, the creator of AGS, for helping me out with learning AGS and of course creating this incredible piece of software. He also recently started working on libastl, a library which would allow you to write AGS-like widgets in any language that has bindings for GTK, so if you have some spare time, you can go help him out with an issue or a pull request. And now I'd like to thank everyone who supports the channel and keeps it going, more specifically, Hoskins, Aiding Bad Ponder, Not A Nut, Uni, Xavier, Albert C, Pete3N, Tibalt Mole, Shen, Z, Workflow, Zach Beer, This is Liam, Much to Less, Bruno, BOFH, Aruno Ruto, Veronico, Akiva, Torvald, Mock Creek, Stephen Flea, Hazek, Uncle Simon, 
Harbinger, Crackleware and Anonymous Donations. I'd also like to thank everyone who supported the channel previously. And as usual, don't forget to check out our Discord server, leave a like or a comment if you enjoyed this video or subscribe if you are feeling extra generous. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next one.